Thank you. We humans, we are incredible beings. We have this great capacity to overcome incredible challenges, and yet times we are, we are also capable of sinking to the lowest of the low. What carries us through these times of ups and downs is this very simple gift we possess. The ability to make personal choice. Now these choices coalesce to form villages, cities, and nations. But at the heart of what drives our civilization is one single human being, you, making that choice that, that decides the direction the society takes. I'm going to start in late 1980s. Let's go back to remote far western Nepal. There are no roads, there is no electricity. These remote Himalayan villages, they have thrived proudly on what they produce for hundreds of years. When Nepal opened up to the outside world in the 80s, these villages and these villages started getting a test of modern life. Education was also accessible to only children from wealthy and upper caste families. A lot of times, the children would be introduced to reading and writing under a vegetable oil lamp. Fast forward about 30 years, if you visit one of these villages now, oftentimes, you'll see paved highways, you, you may even see power, uh, overhead power lines. I am here, one of the children who, who, got, who learned to read and write under one of those vegetable oil lamps. I'm about to introduce you to how we're going to power our future using clean, green technology. Energy drives everything we do, food we eat, clothes we wear, houses we live in, right? But the issue is that 90% of that energy comes from burning hydrocarbons. What we have done in last few decades is we have actually identified technologies, sources, and human capacity to actually transition away from this fossil fuel burning. Now, if you think about my upbringing in a remote Himalayan village where it was in the late 80s, it was untouched by the consequences of fossil fuel burning. Anything from the food we eat, clothes we eat, uh, clothes we wear, like that, medicines we use, and general uplifting of the living standards in the world are inextricably linked to the use of fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are going to be part of the equation for, for, for a long time to come as well. What is not discussed at length and is, is not often debated is that we don't only depend on fossil fuels for energy use. In fact, a lot of our medicine and infrastructures that we build are dependent on fossil fuel, like I mentioned. If we deplete these resources, we are actually taking it away from future generations. So the question becomes, what is it that's preventing us from actually transitioning, transitioning to, uh, to that future? That comes down to two things. One is the cost, the other human, human mind. More precisely, it's actually perception of money we have as human beings. The other thing is the way our, our human mind thinks. Now, let's talk about the money part first. Believe it or not, 
that's the easier, that's the, that's the easier, uh, easier thing to solve here. Now, what, what we would ideally like, like to do is convert that, uh, convert energy from sun, wind, or tidal wave into electricity, like, like, uh, like I said earlier. You also have to think about, think about the intermittency of these sources. We know that sun doesn't always shine, wind doesn't always blow. On top of that, most of the population centers where the energy is needed, they are not close to the windiest or the sunniest places on Earth. So we need to, we need to have technologies that can harness this energy, store that energy, and then transport that energy where it's needed, right? We have made great strides in actually harvesting the energy. Technologies like solar and wind turbines, they have developed so far that now energy that we get from solar, um, solar panels or wind turbines is in parity with, almost in parity with energy we get from uh, gas and coal. What is tricky is the storage and transportation part. So idea, see, ideally what we would like to do is we'd like to convert that energy into a molecule, something like, let's say, hydrogen. Now, the reason we need that, instead of something like, let's say, we are all familiar with batteries, is that batteries are great. We have we're already seen the consequences of developing batteries on our roads, right? Battery is a great technology, but it is not the solution. Hydrogen is very attractive because when you use hydrogen to release that energy, the only thing, only byproduct that you generate is water. So that's where I work in. I work on technologies where we take this uh, energy from the sun, wind, and tidal waves and other resources. Then we use that energy to split things like water into hydrogen and oxygen. In fact, this is not that different from what we are doing with fossil fuels. With fossil fuels, we're actually using the uh, solar energy that irradiated on Earth thousands and millions of years ago. We can do the exact same process with renewable energy as well. We are identifying different technologies, things like, I personally, I, I mostly work on identifying new catalysts that don't need to use rare and expensive elements like platinum and iridium. Similar developments are happening with batteries. The green hydrogen that we produce is about two, three times more expensive than hydrogen from the hydrogen that's derived from hydrocarbons. So this is the link. This is, this is the key. That's a key to our sustainable future. It's great that we use batteries or electricity to drive a car and, and to heat our homes. But what we also have to understand is where that electricity is coming from. Until we completely decarbonize the grid, we're not really solving the problem. All we are really doing is we're shifting where the emissions are happening. Reducing the cost of electricity by uh, cost of renewable electricity by uh, identifying substitutes for platinum and iridium and other technologies is a lot more, lot easier than changing a human mind. Changing the perceptions around the world is a lot harder. Especially, especially when you have to convince people to spend more money. Moving to a sustainable future using renewable energy instead of burning fossil fuel is within our reach. That future is within our reach. Now, what's preventing us from getting to that future is a human mind. The way we look at money, the way we make our choices. When it comes 
to choosing whether to put food on the table for your family or pay slightly higher price for, your, for the fuel, that choice becomes a bit more difficult. Choices like this are even harder for places like where I grew up. The real challenge is how do we uplift the life, uh, life standards in the poorest nations on Earth without actually adding to already teetering atmosphere? So if we use this gift we're all blessed with to make the right choice, make the difficult choice, this clean, green, sustainable future is within our reach. The only thing that's preventing us from getting there is our mind. If we think with an open mind, we'll get to that sustainable, sustainable future, right? And it's really the only thing that stands between a disaster and a truly green, sustainable future is our mind, the way our mind thinks. Thank you.